Hello, thank you for joining. Okay. Hey. Oh, there it is. Hello. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? Doing great. How's your morning been? Uh, fast. It's been a fast, fast morning. It means that everything moves at a million miles an hour, and it doesn't stop. I literally just just hung up on a podcast. We've been going. It's like my second podcast. We've been a live training team meeting. We just go, man. Hey, this is what we do. It's all part of the process how we operate, though. But I thoroughly enjoy. How is your morning going so far? Or it's been. Peaceful over um, meditated, really just got into and like a great part of my day. I like it. I like it. Oh, we already have quite a few. I'm really excited to talk and you know, get some knowledge from you as well in regards to like your mindset shifts, you know, and really being able to discuss different how somebody can really shift their mindset to gain the maximum potential out of their life and their businesses and just within themselves in general. I like it. So, I'm all for it. Yeah. So I'll let you introduce yourself to those that are not familiar with your work. Yeah, please just listen in. Here we go. So my name is Anthony trucks and uh, I work with entrepreneurs and honestly everybody in between, but I'm focused on helping people make shift happen. And so the shift is like whatever cool, crazy thing you want. And it, a lot of it boils down to identity. So my focus is more on identity than it is mindset, but mindset, it kind of comes inside, we'll call it. And so when I work with people, the focus is how do I get you to take what you know and make it what you are consistently doing? That's awesome, honestly. So what do you feel like, I know you have a new book out, The, uh, the Identity Shift. Yeah. So how is, did that book come about? How did you, you know, use your information, your knowledge, your power through your experiences to come up with the book? Yeah, it was accidental, man. It was, uh, it was not the thing that I planned on doing. So I, I had, I'd been taking notes and writing things down, but I actually hadn't quite decided it was going to be a book yet. It was like a thought in the background. So I built this Evernote and this is how, if anybody wants to write a book, this is how I wrote my book. And this is the simplest way that I could come up with it in my brain. I was like, I want to, I want to write down all the topics that I would cover. Like, what would the topic be? I don't mean flesh it all out. Just literally write down bullet points. Here, I'll cover this topic, this topic, this topic, whatever would be a framework piece. I put it in there. I made a list of those, just a running list, crazy long. Then I said, okay, what would be the personal stories that I have? I'd want to weave in. If I want to write a story that is in my life that ties to this, how would I match the concept and the story to that of my life, what I knew? And then the third part was, what data can I find that supports this? What, what can I research? What scholarly journal articles are there? Like, what's out there? And I just made three lists and started building it. And then I was having a conversation with somebody, and they go, hey, you ever thought about writing a book on this stuff? And I go, not really. It hasn't been a concept. Or like, a, the desire goes, you know, I, I said I had been working on this little piece. And so he took a look at it. He goes, you should talk to my publisher. So I reached out to the publisher, and he goes, dude, you have more done than most people who I've already signed to write books. He's like, this is a book. So I pretty much hopped in and started writing it. And when I wrote it, it was easy. I just said, like, here's the chapter. Here's the stories I'm going to add. And here's the data to weave in. So I just started writing and weaving it all together. And sure enough, I turned into a book. And the book's now been published. Yeah, that's amazing. I know I definitely saw um, the synopsis about it and everything. I haven't gotten the chance to read it yet. But that's definitely on my list of books to read. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. It's a good book. I'm sure it is. Of course, you wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little biased, though. So, yeah, but it's, you know, it was it was built and written in a way to where the intro uh, is essentially like a discussion. That's an everyday discussion, I think, that we, we have in our heads or we have other people. And so the beginning of it was more of this conversation uh, that led into the concepts, the ideas for people to get a grasp, like, what is identity? How does it really show up in our lives? And then how do I utilize that as a, uh, as a tool? Because I think it's an actual tool if we properly use it, wield it properly, you can create whatever you want in life. And it's one of those things you hear like, oh, you can create whatever you want. Like, no, quite literally, I think the separation between most people having what they want and, and actually still wanting it, right, is the difference between whether or not you take what you know and have learned and actually get it moving in life or if you start it and stop it or if it becomes naturally who you are to do that thing. Because when it's who you are to do the thing, the thing gets done more consistently, easier, actually. It's, it's, it's more of like it's an alignment. Like, this is who I am to do this thing. So you do that thing, and stuff happens. So it's, 
Yeah, yeah it's, it's all dialed in there. It clearly defines how to do it. It's pretty, pretty, I think, in my opinion, it's pretty fun to kind of go through the book and read it because I wrote it in a way that's like fun. I want to be like, I'm not talking to scientists. I'm like talking to people. So I'm going to make this a fun book to read. Oh, I'm really excited. I'm definitely looking forward to reading it. I'm reading one book right now. So as soon as I'm finished with it, that's definitely going to be my next one. Go get it. <laughs> I'll tag you in it. So what would you recommend for somebody that's, you know, really struggling with shifting their mindset? Like, what would you say, like, the first thing for them to do is to start shifting their identity, shifting their mindset to get to where they want to be in, like, their business, their career? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, the thing is, it's, it's, so mindset's the big thing I don't, that's how to explain. I don't work on mindset. I think that a lot of people work on mindset. It's not very helpful because, while it's a tool, it's one of those things you can get the outstretches of it and the reach of it, and, and it's no longer useful to you. For example, if my mindset's this thing that says I'm, I'm in a boxing ring and I've been boxing for a long time, right? And I'm in a boxing ring and I'm like, I got to work hard and I do my thing. At a certain point, it's like the game plan goes out the window. This guy is just different. And, and if I'm just like, I tried, here's my plan, didn't work because I'm not a boxer, then I'll lose the fight. It's no big deal. Whereas if I have my mindset, my mindset gets to the edges and stretches of its capabilities. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. I'm, I don't matter, I'm, I'm great, but like, I start questioning if I can't. If that goes out the window, but I internally believe I'm a boxer, I will find a way to win this fight because it's who I am. It's because I'm I'm, I'm, I identify as a boxer. I force what a boxer does. I don't care if the plan works or not. I'm going to win this fight somehow because that's who I am, right? And not enough of us live in our way, our lives in a way that make this a reality. We, we live our lives in a way of saying, I tried the thing. Maybe I'm part of that. We don't go, notice who I am. Because when it's who you are, it changes the game a little bit. So the big thing is like, how do you focus on that is who I am. And that's where I focus on work. So how you shift into that is, is more so going, I'm going to shift into this and I'm going to look at the two different areas that have to do with identity. But this is where I'll cover mindset for you. Identity is comprised of beliefs, thoughts, actions. They overlap in areas. So between beliefs and thoughts, you have mindset. Thoughts and actions, you have habits. Between beliefs and actions, you have like my personal pride, ego, what I believe and what I see and how proud I am of myself. And so the area you're asking about is mindset. So we're going to talk about this. I believe that we have allies and enemies. And in our head, these are, these are not the best if they're enemies. And what I mean by that is you have beliefs and thoughts, and if they overlap and they are allies, you can do a whole lot with your mindset. If I believe I'm supposed to do this thing, but I start thinking things in opposition, oh, you're not smart enough, you don't know how, you don't have the resources, well, then my beliefs of my belief that I can say, for example, be, uh, I don't know, maybe I can be a great business owner, but that's the belief, right? And the thoughts in my head are, but you haven't done it before, but you suck, but what if nobody buys your thing, right? Well, now they're enemies. I have this aspect of my belief and my thoughts down here, but they're enemies and so they, don't, they don't actually line up. But if they're allies, if I have his beliefs of like, I got this, I can do this. And then I have an ally of, a, of an actual thought. My man, Evan Carmike, what's up, my guy? Um, if I have this thought that's an ally, it'll go, you got this, you could do it. And now my mindset is positive and operational in a great way. But I think a lot of us don't shift into that because we, I don't know what to do. Well, you look at either your beliefs and thoughts and say, are they allies? Are they enemies? And if my beliefs aren't in line with where I want to go, well, I got to start adjusting that to make it an ally. If my thoughts aren't in line with one of the two, I got to start adjusting that. You shift in those areas. And it might mean saying things specifically. How are you doing? Uh, double dot theory. Hey. So it might mean you actually going in and saying, I'm going to focus on really getting my thoughts in line with where I want to go. I'm going to feed them. I'm going to put stuff into my thoughts consciously. The media I consume, conversations I have, the, the social media that I'm scrolling through, the books that I might read. Um, it could be the environment, physical environment. And if you start seeding your thoughts with those things in a proper way, you start having more come out. My man's showing love for the book, Evan, Evan Cart, Michael. But that's the goal. How do we get to the point of actually seeding my thoughts and making them be more alignment with what I'm trying to create and then have my allies, my allies be my beliefs and thoughts instead of having them be enemies? Yeah, that's honestly amazing. So would you really say the, the key goal is to really be friends with your mind, essentially, you know, becoming friends with your it's mind? A, I don't know if it's friends with the mind. It's pretty much saying two separate entities for this aspect is I have a belief, right? I believe this thing. I have thoughts that are constantly going through my head. Because, for example, there are some people that go, um, I believe I could be a great parent. For example, I believe I could be a great dad. But then I may question and go, but I've never been a dad. And my dad wasn't a great dad. 
oh man, but I believe I can, but I don't, I don't know if I'm, you know, like that's the conversation. Yeah. So now it, now they're enemies and when they're enemies, I don't show up with a great mindset. The idea is to go, I believe I could be a great dad, but my dad didn't do his, you know, what doesn't matter. I'm going to show up and be a great, you, you got this aunt. You can show up and be a great dad. You can, you can love on your kids, take them places, do what great dads do. I got, you could do this. You could do this. And you start having that conversation. Now the belief and the thoughts match. And now my mindset's like, I got this. Let's go do work. Not enough people show up like this. They let the thoughts run. Actually, the National Science Foundation did a study and found that of the thoughts we have every day, which are between 40 and 1,000 thoughts per day, 80% of those thoughts are negative. And 95% of those are repetitive. So it's a constant process of negative thoughts looping through our brain day in, day out. And we never stop. We yeah. never stop and go, hey, hey, hold on. Let me take control of this real quick. And then let me start driving this thing where I want to go. We just let them all go crazy and go negative repetitively. And then people wonder why they have enemies between beliefs and thoughts and then wonder why their mindset's weak. Yeah, I, I definitely understand that a little bit more now. So thank you for explaining that. Yeah. So do you use tools like affirmations or meditations or even like breathing with, you know, the yeah. work with? So the way I look at it is... Uh, Let's do this. You ever gone fishing before, like in a pond? Not, no. Okay, cool. Let's say, let's say that. Let's say you said yes. So <laughs> we're gonna say we went fishing. So if you go to like the lakes around my house, there's these reservoirs, and they do these things called fish plants. So there's certain times of the year they drop a whole bunch of fish in, right? So if they drop a bunch of salmon, we'll say salmon go, which they're not even in there. Let's say they put a bunch of I don't know salmon in there. Can I catch catfish? No, because well, most. They didn't see the water with catfish to fish out. So when we're saying, hey, I want to have great thoughts. Well, the problem is I, I have seeded salmon, but I want catfish. I want great thoughts, but I'm seeding crappy thoughts. So I call it seed to feed. So I got to seed what's going in. And then the, the water level, your consciousness is above the water. Subconscious is below the water. So what yeah. you're feeding into your subconscious from the shore, we'll call, is what you fish out of the water when you're on the, on the water. And so a lot of people are seeding it with, with bad stuff on social media. They're watching the negative stuff that, that makes them feel like they're less than in all comparison. There's been studies recently, right, with Facebook and all this stuff going, hey, the, you guys are putting crap out there and make it detrimental to women and, and little girls, right? Because they're, they're seeding their brain all day with negative thoughts of comparison. I'm less than. You watch the news that's always negative and making you feel bad. On top of that, you're listening to music that sucks and it puts crappy stuff in there. No one's reading books. And we stay confined in our environments so nothing ever changes. So all I'm seeding that water with of my subconscious mind that I'm feeding out consciously is crap. So it's like what you got to do is say, if I want catfish, I got to seed catfish. That means I got to only look at social media that's positive, uplifting, and, and stop following the rest of the stuff. I need to have better conversations with better people who are happier, more joyful. They're not pessimistic or negative. I need to actually read more books that are in line with where I want to go. I need to make sure I change my environment. I get out in nature. I do breathing. I take care of myself because now what I'm doing is I'm putting things in that are subconsciously allowing these fish, these thoughts to grow. And boom, I can fish out what I want, which is great thoughts, great confidence. Everything's positive. But we are subconsciously, without even knowing it, and very passively letting crap into our heads. That's why, like, I don't watch the news. I'm not, I don't watch because it's, it's so skewed towards negativity because it sells I don't watch the news um the things i read i'm selective on what i choose to read because that stuff goes in and if i do read stuff that's outside of what i like or what like i trust i i tell my brain hey bro just read it entertain the idea but don't accept it so i'll read these kind of things i don't like to have conversations that are gossipy or are or, or, you know negative or downplaying other people so i don't have those conversations and I move, I get out, I change my environment, I travel. So I, I do these things that allow my subconscious brain to be seated. What's up, Stu, Mass and Gil? To be seated with stuff to where when I want to like go into my world, I got positive stuff I'm fishing out of the subconscious of my mind. I love that, honestly, because I really think everything around your environment, which you consume yourself with, is so important. Because, you know, as a fitness and nutrition coach, when I always tell my clients, the first thing that you need to be focusing on is your environment. You know, first of all, having an environment where you have somebody that's supporting you in the changes that you're going to be making, you know, having that environment of being mindful of the food that you're putting in, being connecting your mind with your body in order to see like, you know, the results that you truly want to see. Because if you have a crappy mindset towards your body, 
and you're trying to work out and trying to eat healthy and then that mindset keeps telling you and feeding you negative thoughts you're literally every single thought you have is creating a chemical into your body and mm -hmm. telling you not really digested food as probably you're you know you're releasing a lot of cortisol holding in all this energy all the stress so you're not going to see the results that you want to no matter how hard you work because your mind is not in alignment with your body like you cannot become the person you want to become by hating yourself into yeah. that to love i agree and really tap into like your future self what does your future self do watch listen to consume and like it's not all about consuming only this proper food and nutrients it's about really consuming like you mentioned you know listening being selective with the music you listen to not listening to the news and just really tapping into like the positive thoughts and positive vibrations around you yeah you have to i mean if you're not conscious about it, it all goes sideways man that's kind of how it sucks and it works but it's like a matter of yeah definitely like making those quick adjustments yeah it definitely is so what would you say i know i hopped onto one of your lives previously and you had mm -hmm. mentioned about you know being overwhelmed and it's like instead of looking at it as being overwhelmed looking at it as being maximized so oh, it's you, different, yeah. cause it really helped me honestly at that point i'm like oh this is perfect i just hopped onto it in the right timing <laughs> Yeah, let, let me see that as the thought. I'm going to keep using that word seed. Let me let me put it this way. The idea is to not say that no one gets to a point of, of like difficulty because things happen. Because things happen to all of us and it's like, ah, this is difficult we do, right? The way I look at it is I go, okay, well, I want more things. I do. I want more things, no matter what those things are. But if the, the things I have now and the effort I'm giving, if I don't have that thing and I am capped out at what I have because of what I'm doing now, if I can't do more, I'll never get that thing. If I, if I can't do more than I'm doing, I'll never get that thing. I'm going to be constantly looking at it going, oh, I'm burned out, but I want that. So it sucks because I'm like, well, I'm never going to get that. So I was like, well, what's the, why do I feel this way? Because there are people that do what I do, and that's easy for them. Like you have, you have your Oprah's, Elon Musk, your Tony Robbins. They're out there killing at levels. And I'm like, bro, if I took that guy's day on for a day, it burned me. I'd go crazy. What are they doing? And it's not an ability. It's a capacity thing. Okay. So if I, if I say I'm overwhelmed, I say I'm done. I'm overwhelmed. I am overflowing. I can't do anything more. But if I go, no, look, I'm just maximized. I need to upgrade. Someone said upgrade. I need to upgrade and expand my capacity. Maximize says I, I, I'm at the max I, I'm capable of doing now. But look, I can actually expand more and then I can handle more and it increases by maximum. Like you do weights. You do fitness, right? You can improve your max. So it's all about what's the one rep max for squats. Let's let's lift heavier weights. Let's increase my max. I don't go like, oh, I can't get stronger. No, I can increase the max. So when I look at people and they're doing something for the dream, it's like, hey, realize where you're at right now. You're going to feel maximized and so to feel difficult and heavy. But if you want that thing, you must accept that I'm going to have to be able to do more and not freak out. How do I do that? Here's what I tell people. Normalize to speed. It's, you're just going faster than you're used to going. And as opposed to hitting the brake, stop at the car, getting out of the car, go, okay, I got to get to the point where 100 miles an hour feels like 60. If I can control it easier, how do I do that? Well, you got to learn how to, the car drives, grip the wheel, feel the steering, press the gas a little bit, you know, shift gears. You got to do something where you can normalize the speed you're at as opposed to stopping altogether. Because then after a while, you go, okay, great. I feel it was hard, but I feel comfortable driving at 100 miles an hour. Let me try to go 105. Let me try to go 115 because the people that are living the life I want, they all go 120. How do I get to 120? Not by stopping because you're overwhelmed. It's by going, I'm maximized. I don't want to handle this. Let me normalize the speed. Now I can keep going up. Okay. So essentially it's really to understand like where you're currently at and understanding that there's another level to where you want to get to and working towards that. Well, yeah, it's always, I think it's a, it always means on level. I think we know that. It's understanding what it feels like to be at the next level and understand that the feeling you're going to have on the journey there is going to feel like something you never touched before, never felt like before. And it really should feel like out of character is what I tell people. It's this out of stretch, out of character, out of reach. The thing that you're wanting to get, it's going to force you to do things that make you go, I don't know if I'm the person to do this. And I feel like this, you know, it's in a, out of character. We all assume that out of character is down and bad and less than when reality is out of character is that next level character you want to get up to. So if we don't have this perception of like, oh, well, it's the next level, it's going to feel way, way worse because it's obviously out of character and different. If you lean out when you should lean in, then you'll never get what you want, 
but it's, it's actually trying to say, how can I do more things that are out of character, but in line with the character or identity of who I want to be that has the things I want to have? Yeah, that I definitely can see how that can apply more into my life, uh, for sure. And Everybody's, mine too. Yeah, everybody's life, honestly, because it's like the more comfortable you are with where you're at, you're not going to move forward in life because you have to understand that there's going to be risks you need to take. You have to get uncomfortable, just like it is like in the gym, you know, it's going to feel heavy at the beginning with, you know, starting off maybe with 10 pound weights, but then slowly your muscles start to get stronger, as you mentioned. And then as it, you can up it to another level, you can increase yeah. and increase and improve your endurance, your flexibility, all of that. So I feel like you know, the mind and body and even your identity, it's its flexible. It can be flexible to where you want to get it to be. Yeah, 100%. We, well, just the sheer concept of neuroplasticity, the thing we're experiencing is like our brains can mold and reshape, right? The thing we're, heal we're feeling as overwhelmed and stressed out, essentially it's saying, look, the way your brain's functioning, how it's handling things, how it's seeing things, how it's managing self-care and stress, um, the chem it's just chemicals, chemicals and electrical impulses, right? So if I can say, I'm going to rewire this bad boy to where this level of stimulus doesn't shut me down, right? Mm -hmm. I understand how do I deal with the stress, have the hard conversations, whatever it might be. If I can lean into that aspect, I'll rewire the brain to go, this thing that right now feels like I can't do it, I do it every Tuesday morning and it's easy now. Like when people first start working out, they're like, oh, I feel out of shape. Oh, it's hard to warm up. It's just heavy to warm up. I can't get to that workout. After a year, two years doing it, the warm-up is it's like fun the workout is easy because like they normalize to it if you go back and go remember when you couldn't even warm up you go yeah that's crazy yeah i remember that like I, it's weird right? it's easy now same thing for life but it just shows up in different areas but you have to lean in and realize that's the process like it's going to suck it's kind of supposed to but the more you do it the more it becomes normalized it's easier you build you create and life gets bigger and better so do you incorporate morning and nighttime routines for yourself? Yeah, big time. Uh, nighttime, not as much as the, the daytime, but there's something about starting your day under control. Now, there's a lot of science around how to have a morning routine, what you should do in those things. And there's a lot of guys that have schools of thought. Some people are like, get up and go to work first thing. Some yeah. people are like, get up and meditate. It's all different. What I've found is, in my opinion, mm -hmm. the morning routine, the purpose of it is to get some things done. But like, I really want to start my day in power. I want to start my day with a sense of control. Like I started my day, the day didn't start me. And so with that, I go, great. Well, if that's the end result, the purpose is to start the day and feel like I'm in power. Well, what if I can just create a morning routine that I like for me? So some people are like, don't ever check your phone for the next for, for the first hour of the morning. I'm like, but that's not how I do it. I'm going to check that thing 15 minutes to make sure I didn't have like the, the team doesn't need me. Nothing's going on and I'm at, I'm at more ease. But if I don't check and I go ride my bike in the morning, I'm like, holy crap. Am I, is it that the team need me? Like, it's just this anxiety. So I'm like, I don't like that. So I'm going to get up, check my phone 15 minutes, then pop downstairs, do my work, right? They're yeah. just, that when I work, I mean, work out and build some things in, but I created mine. And I really don't care what anybody else says because mine gives me the ability to be functional, productivity, productive in what I do. But I also have the sense of going into my day going, yeah, I got, I got things when I'm in control of this day and I do things different, see things different, feel different. So yeah, morning routine's big. It gets you a sense of control, but create your own. You get ideas of how to create your own, but create your own is my recommendation. Yeah, I definitely can relate to that because, you know, I've had different multiple like morning routines, nighttime routines. But first, my morning routine is waking up first thing, hitting the gym like 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. And at first it gave me like a good thrill. I felt better. I was ready to start my day. And then I was like, okay, take this time instead of waking up and going straight to the gym. Take it as time to get up, start like, you know, responding back to DMs, taking care of the things that I have to do. And okay, that was causing me a little bit more stress. So now my new morning routine is, you know, I wake up, I try not to touch my phone in terms of like messages or anything, but I'll get up, I'll meditate, really tune into myself. And when I feel really tuned into myself, I then from there, I'll sit and read like a book for about 30, 40 minutes. And then from there, I go on and start my day. And to me, after having tried like those multiple morning routines in the past, I feel like this is what pers personally works best for me compared to other routines that I've tried. Yeah, so you gotta do, as long as it fits, it's all that matters. Yeah, it really is because I really feel like it's really about 
and becoming just in tune with your mind, with your body. And like you said, just taking control of your day and what works best for you. Yeah. And the whole purpose is to get yourself started in the next thing and, and practice it. If you do it, don't beat yourself up because it didn't work the first time or you missed it. Like I'm, I'm big on having a long and a short routine. Like have a long routine. That's like a full one if you have time, but if you have like a short amount of time, it can be three things in 15 minutes, but have something that gives you the sense of like, right. I didn't get it all done, but I, I started the day in control. That's the end result. And do whatever you think's best for you to get that going and have two variations of it. Yeah. A hundred percent. Well, I know we're kind of coming close to the end of time. We are. Yep, I got to jump to the next thing I do because life goes fast. Yeah, I know. I understand. So I really want to say thank you so much for, you know, joining me on here today, giving lots of value information that a Very lot welcome. of people take away and apply to their lives. And I'm looking forward to doing something like this again. Count me in. Awesome. Well, have a great day. You too. Take care, everybody. And